we're going to be discussing the impact of technology and healthcare reform and how it really impacted uh, during COVID-19. So I think I'd like to start with where you see, Revi, the role of technology in healthcare reform as a, as a whole in general. Let's start with that. I'm just an engineer, so I build things. I can tell what I'm doing now and how I see technology uh, being used. Uh, reform is for Dr. Chalal or people who, have, who are as remarkable as him. I can only give light or some kind of an idea of reforms which are required in making healthcare accessible to all uh, based upon my experiences as a frontline worker. And this would be engineer's point of view. This will not be a person who has tremendous amount of experience in healthcare or healthcare sciences, okay? You know, the easiest thing from a tech perspective is how can you augment healthcare workers, okay? And that, because current situation has exposed that. You go to any health facility, whether it is a hospital or it's a facility in a rural area or something like that, there is a constraint and there's a constraint of two things. There's a constraint of cash, there's a constraint of experts, there's a constraint of infrastructure, and in most cases, accessibility itself is not there. So tech can help that. My expertise is in the area of robotics and AI. Certain things which can be done by machines, both in terms of safeguarding healthcare workers, but also in terms of productivity. How can you augment a doctor in terms of diagnostics? How can you, by giving him analytics data, instead of he going through a lot of history and historical and empirical evidences and all that stuff, uh, what's in the field of research and medicine? Uh, these two things have been quite visible in this epidemic. A uh, second thing is how do you basically take unnecessary tasks which are there for, spe for specialist healthcare workers, primarily you know nurses in terms of uh, taking care of patients. How do you basically ensure that the medicines are given at the right time? How do you ensure that the instrumentation part of uh, healthcare infrastructure works on its own? Uh, rather than you know with human intervention and, and, and humans basically govern that and monitor that. And then the third one is the whole, you know, the support system of a hospital, how you can make it better with machines, right, in terms of taking care of patients, uh, making sure things which they do at any reception of a hospital, how do you ensure that the right patient is approached or sent or enabled to a right doctor uh, instead of the searching across the hospital and so and so forth. This is the simplest part. This is the easy part. You know, technology is mature, it is available, it is accessible. The complex part, this doesn't require that kind of regulation. And you know, you have to just amend certain regulations to, to ensure that machines become part of the ecosystem of healthcare. And then if you include remote treatments when it comes to rural and all that stuff, then it becomes far more exciting. But then in that case, regulator or the regulations have to open up. This is the first part. The second part is where you really, really take healthcare to a next level using AI, which is in terms of precise uh, diagnostics or improving accuracy of a surgery or something like that. I think there are a lot of things which can be done around a surgical table, and those things are already happening in terms of uh, precise surgery and improving the accuracy, exactly doing what it requires. And that's a highly specialized field. That's not my field, but there are a lot of my colleagues who are working on that. It is the second one which I think will change a lot of things, uh, which is precise diagnostics. I'm not going to you know, spell it out but or get into details unless you want me to do. Uh, both machine learning and deep learning, they are two attributes of artificial intelligence and pattern detection can tremendously reduce the fatigue of a physician or a surgeon or a healthcare expert by using these technologies. But then they have to be, they have to be accepted because while machine learning has a high degree of accuracy, deep learning is still uh, in an accuracy zone of somewhere from 40% to 80%. So in a nutshell, this is how I see tech playing part. From the reform perspective, my only thing is that we talk about two aspects when we think about governance of a country. One is economics of it, another is defense part of it. And they basically, they literally take attention of almost every leader, whether president or a prime minister. I think healthcare should take precedence now. Accessibility of that healthcare, especially in developing countries, to all is absolutely necessary and reforms should point in that, in that direction.